Hi everyone, it's James. It was a beautiful day, so I decided to ride to Starbucks in Nishiakashi. If you plan to live in Japan, or if you live in Japan, you have to keep yourself entertained, otherwise you can go mad. The reason why I'm shooting this video is because I wanted to test out my action camera. I've been living in Japan for many years and I got my Japanese driver's license about 17 years ago when I first came. Back then I had access to a 50cc scooter but now I have a much bigger bike. It's a Honda PCX 125cc so two persons can ride it. In order to ride one of these bikes you're going to have to have a Japanese driver's license first. You're probably wondering how I got my scooter license. Well, I took a shortcut. First of all, back in Canada, I had a motorcycle license. Unfortunately, I forgot how to ride a motorcycle. Oh, maybe I should talk about how I got my Japanese driver's license first. Um, I had a Canadian driver's license. I still have a valid Canadian driver's license and I had it translated by JAF, Japanese Automobile Federation, I think. After getting it translated, I was able to take it to the Ministry of Transportation to take a paper test. Actually, it wasn't a paper test. It was a bunch of questions, I think about 12 questions on a screen. My memory is a little bit hazy because it was a long time ago, but I think it was a multiple choice type of question. I did well, so I was able to take the road test on the same day. I remember the road test was a little difficult because um, it was in this confined area. It was a controlled area within the perimeter of the Ministry of Transportation. There. The roads were very narrow and there were gutters on the sides, um, much like the roads that you see in Japan. I remember the examiner examined how I would get out of certain situations. So if I drove on a small road and if I couldn't turn properly, what would I do? Would I back up? Would I try to turn? Or would I use the mirrors to make sure? that there was no oncoming traffic or no people walking behind or in front of me. Safety was paramount. Anyway, I remember the examiner congratulating me on passing. The same thing is going to happen when you take the scooter license. So in my case, instead of signing up with a driving school or a school that teaches you how to ride scooters or motorcycles, I took the short version by applying for the test directly. What I had to do was go to the Ministry of Transportation again and fill out a form, submit my driver's license and pay a fee. And then they gave me a map of the driving course. I remember walking across the road to another section of the Ministry of Transportation and I walked through this scooter course or motorcycle course. So based on the map I had to memorize the route in which I was going to ride on. You don't need to bring your own scooter. They have scooters and they have helmets. It is your choice if you want to bring motorcycle gloves or a jacket or pants depending on the season. But I went there in the autumn. So I went there fully clothed looking professional. It's better to look protected in front of the officials. That way they will think that you're serious and you're careful. I want to underline the word careful. That is part of Japanese society. As long as you can show that you are a safe person, you got it made. Before going to the Ministry of Transportation for my motorcycle test, I checked online for tips on what to expect at a Japanese motorcycle scooter testing center. I also bought a book on how to ride 
scooters and it also came with a DVD so that was very helpful. Everything that I saw and learned encompasses on safety. So if you're in Japan, do as the Japanese do. After you pass the test, you can ride it the way you want to. Before you get onto your bike and take the road test, make sure you bow to the examiners. That shows total respect to the examiners. Oh, one thing I should point out, the examiners are cops, or at least former cops. Just before you mount your bike, you will approach your bike from the left. Never approach your bike from the right because that is facing traffic. If you do, you'll probably fail. Make sure you have your helmet on. Look to your left, look to your right, or look to your right, then look to your left. The examiners are checking to see if you're really paying attention to traffic or not. After that, you mount onto your bike. Insert your key. Before you turn on the ignition, adjust the mirrors. Again, the examiners are checking to see if you're paying attention to your surroundings. After adjusting the mirrors, you can turn on the ignition. For scooters, it's squeezing the left brake and then pressing the start button with your thumb. Make sure you signal the indicator right. Make a quick check with your head to the right. Then you may proceed. I highly recommend getting a writing book. Most books are illustrated. Try to get a book with a DVD in it. So in my case, after passing the road test, I had to go to another testing place that was in Higashi Kakugawa. I had to make an appointment and then after a month I was able to go there. That place was more like driver's ed, as in driver's education. After spending several hours there, I passed and then on a different day I had to go back to the Ministry of Transportation and submit more forms. And finally, after waiting four hours, I got my new driver's license. Well, I had my motorcycle license in my driver's license. After you get your motorcycle license, you're not allowed to double ride anyone for a year. I think the purpose of doing that is to get you to practice riding your... So once you have a scooter in this caliber, 125cc, you can ride just about anywhere. You just can't ride on highways. Here in Japan, you're allowed to ride between cars. You're also allowed to ride between a guardrail and a car, and the curb and a car. Of course, that's more dangerous, but you're allowed to. I was a little apprehensive in the beginning, but I got used to things. I highly recommend wearing guards. The right gloves that protect your knuckles and your wrists. Elbow guards, knee guards, shoulder guards, and your back. Right now, it is hot and humid, and it's very difficult to wear all those things but at least wear something to protect your elbows and your back. You see this guy riding in front of me? He only has a helmet to protect his head. I'm going to talk about riding on rainy days. I would avoid riding on rainy days. If it's just raining lightly, maybe. However, if it's raining cats and dogs, forget it. It's not worth falling. Scooter brakes don't work very well on rainy days, especially when it's raining heavily. There's lots of oil on the roads and when it rains, water and oil just don't mix. I am speaking from experience. I have fallen at least a couple of times on rainy days. Even with my protective gear, it hurts. Whenever I have to go far on a rainy day, I usually would ride my scooter down to the station and there they have paid parking. Paid parking is usually 200 yen. That's for the whole day. The speed limit in Japan while driving in the city is 40 kilometers per hour. Bigger roads like the one I was just on is 50 kilometers per hour. Small narrow roads like this would be less than 30 kilometers per
per hour. So I am on my way. Ooh, almost an accident. What an idiot driver. This small car went too much onto the road. So to be a good rider, you have to be alert all the time. I'm somewhat getting closer to my destination. I'm going to Starbucks in Nishiakashi. I haven't seen much road rage here in Japan. Sure, I've seen people honk and people curse at each other. I have never seen anything extreme like in the United States or in Canada. Let me talk about Bosozoku, which means biker gangs or punk ass shitheads on bikes. If you live in Japan, you'll definitely encounter these jerks who ride scooters dangerously on the roads or on the sidewalks. They rev up their engines, they um, modify their bikes to make lots of noise. These guys are just unruly and ignore all traffic regulations. I have seen three guys on one scooter. Like I'm talking about a 50cc scooter. These guys are always testing fate. If they ever crash, no sympathies from me. Well, that's it for this video. Well, at least for me talking. I'm just going to play some music from here. <laughs>